Hey guys, it's Wes back from Animation Toolkit and today we're talking about replacement hands. So we recently launched a new product which had a set of eight different shaped hands uh, for replacement animation. That means that you could pop one, set, one style of hand out of its socket and replace it with another to form a full open and close sequence in stop motion animation. They're these, in fact. So you've, you've seen these in our shop. In our store, if you've seen anybody playing with them in uni or uh, around the industry, these are what they are. All right, so this is how you fit them. So I'm not going to waste any time. Let's get straight into this how-to. Right, guys, jumping straight in here, you're going to need uh, quite a few little bits and bobs. Uh, obviously, your armature that you're working with, hopefully it's an animation toolkit armature, but don't worry if you've not got one of ours, then we believe, I mean, we specifically design this kit actually to be fairly universal. It will fit with other armature um, makers and models, so don't worry too much. And if you're struggling with that, then reach out to us and we can send a little bit of advice. But yes, armature, gonna need one of those. Obviously, your pack of hands that you've purchased from Animation Toolkit, and specifically, let's get rid of the packet. We can get rid of the hands for now because we're not gonna use those in this tutorial. So away go the hands. And we are left with, okay, the two forearms. Really important, guys, two forearms and the elastic bands. We're gonna show you how to use these with the elastic bands shortly. So don't lose those, they're not junk, uh, really important. So two forearms, put those aside for now. Uh, the Allen keys that are an appropriate fit to your armature. So this is for an Annabelle 3. Uh, super glue, don't scrimp on super glue guys, super important. Pay the extra and get the branded super glue that's really strong. The stronger the better. Uh, pin vise, guys, these are cheap. There are animation toolkit if you've not got one. Uh, and the M3 uh, tapper. Uh, so this M3 tap is from Amazon and I think it costs probably about two, two English pounds. So you, you don't necessarily need one of these, but it is a massive help if you can get one of those. Uh, scalpel, as always, a scalpel. A pair of pliers uh, and a lighter. Mm, interesting. Uh, of course, guys, take the proper precautions and protection. We're using super glue, we're using a lighter, so don't set fire to yourself or indeed the area that you're working in. Uh, make sure that you're in a well ventilated space, guys, and make sure that at all times that you're safe. Right, let's crack straight into this. I'm just going to move the bits that I don't need aside for now. I'm going to take a look at my armature. So the armature needs these forearms fit in just here. That's really important because they will obviously connect to the hands at some point. There's a couple of ways around this, guys. A couple of ways around this. Uh, first, I'm going to start removing the parts that I don't necessarily need at the moment. So. These are the old forearms from the Build 3. So they're coming off straight away. They're the ones I don't need and they can go into my spare parts bin. Or, so listen up, this is method one. From your armature, now it could be one of ours or a, an animation toolkit armature or, or other armature, you're gonna need a ball bar. So it's a six millimeter ball here that goes direct into our joint. This is a six millimeter single ball joint. We need specifically this ball bar here, this bar, but we don't need the additional ball, ball on this end. So if you've taken the time to glue your armature up with a thread lock or Loctite or something similar, and that thread lock is permanent, a permanent fix, you'll find that these balls are completely irremovable he says all's not lost don't worry put your armature aside guys so we need to remove one of these balls in comes your pliers all i'm going to do is hold the pliers <clears throat> hold the ball bar into the teeth of the pliers guys just gently i don't want to mark it in any way i do quite like shiny unscratched metal Light the lighter, just like so, and then begin to heat up that ball. My lighter work, does it light? Does it work? Okay, let's go again. 
So before long guys, the heat will break the bond on that ball. So just be careful only to apply it to this ball at this end of the ball bar. If indeed it does re release the ball on the opposite guys, you might find yourself in a position where you need to re-glue or thread lock the ball that you need back onto the ball bar. But in this case, let's just hope it removes the one that we need. So this is getting quite hot. I obviously don't want to touch it guys. That's really important. All we're trying to do is break the bond of the thread locking glue. Okay, I'm cheating. I'm getting another pair of pliers. So you might need another pair of pliers too. Just, I mean, just to pop that ball off. And just obviously, so I don't burn my fingers again. There we go. Ah, there we go, done, real. And that's all we needed to do. Okay, so initially, uh, I'm just offering that up there just to see where it fits or where this might fit uh, with the arm. So I want the, the forearm to be around here, which means that I'm gonna have to trim this bar by about 10 mil. So I'm gonna take 10 mil off it. So you can e do this two ways, guys. You can either use a jeweler's saw to remove 10 mil off there that you don't need, or you can use a pair of pliers just to snap it off. So these are fairly chunky pliers. So all I'm gonna do is just whack that into the teeth of the pliers and watch your fingers. Oh, yes, sorry, I've had to do that off camera, guys. So. There we go, just popped off the bit that we didn't need just there. And now, that is round about, oh, we're using this one, aren't we? That is round about the right size. Okay, next thing is to make our ball and bar fit into the forearm here like this. So uh, I've, I've, I'm cheating here, guys, and I didn't advise it at the top, but I've just remembered we're gonna need a three millimeter drill bit as well so just very quickly whiz the three millimeter drill bit come on into our pin vise just like so guys and it's as simple as just running that through there by hand, just to open it up a bit. Just like that. Okay. And there you go, that fits perfectly, which is exactly what we want. Don't need that bit. So that's what we want there. Nice snug fit. Get rid of the old bolt. Save that for later. So this is method one, guys. Get some super glue <clears throat> and just drop some super glue into there and then onto the, the stud. And then be sure to make sure that you let it stick in the right place, which I think is just about got it there. Just clean that off. There, just taking off any excess glue. So that's method one. Uh, and then that will obviously fit straight into our armature like so. So method one, just pop that on and then put my armature aside. Okay guys, this is method number two. So, uh, forearm, so take your forearm, and on animation toolkits, we've got these uh, ball studs, these really short ball studs. So that's a six millimeter ball on the end of a stud, on the end of a nut, and on the end of a five millimeter length M3 stud. Dead simple, guys. I uh, appreciate it's probably an extra couple of quid to purchase them, but I would thoroughly recommend these. So take your pin vise, 
And in the end of the pin vise, you want to be fitting the M3 tap. Okay, there we go. M3 taps in. Really simple. It's all held, hand held, guys. Hold it by hand and just very gently just open these up. Now, in most cases, this, this product, this forearm has actually been engineered and made with an M3 tap already in place. If you've got the back end of the early stock, unfortunately, the M3 wasn't there. But if you've got the new stock, the M3 should be there. But nevertheless, you still might need to send an M3 tap uh, down the hole <clears throat> uh, just to open it up. Sometimes, uh, just with the manufacturing process, they can be a little bit tight. And then once it's tapped, obviously, your ball stud screws straight in. And that is as simple as that. Just to make sure it stays there forever, we've got our super glue. As I say, great quality super glue. This is Loctite, loads of other brands available. Screw that into place. And it's just, all of this is just finger tight. You can, if you want, very gently just nip that up. In most respects, guys, I'd say it doesn't need it. So there you have it. That's the simplest way of doing it. And then all that's left is to fit that back onto your armature. There we go. So two brand new forearms for our replacement hand sets on our Build 3 armature here, guys. Almost ready to animate, I suppose. Um, so take your hands, obviously the replacement hands through replacement animation, you can get a wild, wind, wild, wild, a wide range of movement and emotion. Uh, they simply pop in like this and you can move and animate. Now the thing is with these guys, what we've noticed already and we've accommodated for it is that through time, through lots of animation and movement, they can start to get a little bit loose. So from the get-go, you might not entirely be happy with the tension of that wrist joint. So and that's why the way these things have been designed, guys, is that you've got this lovely slot down the forearm and, oh look, it can be clamped together. What would we use to clamp it together? And this, guys, is where obviously your small elastic bands come into play. This is such a simple method of tensioning a joint. Very simple. Just wrap that elastic band around the forearm as many times as you want to achieve the level of tension that you require. And then Holy moly, that is super tight. Yeah. Guys, if you're not happy with the tension, take some off to loosen it and add some more wraps, obviously to make it a lot tighter. It's completely up to you. Uh, and if it snaps through uh, wear and tear, which of course it will, any elastic band don't last forever, then there's a replacement set uh, in the bag for you. So again, on the other side of my armature, other hands in, there we go. Nice and tight, nice and tensioned. And that, guys, concludes this tutorial. Thank you so much for listening. I hope this has been useful for somebody out there, obviously, for fitting our set of replacement hands onto our armatures but we do know that other armature suppliers are very similar in the setup. And um, should I say they copied many years ago. So we embraced um, a sizing method of ball. So these are a six millimeter ball here. A lot of our competitors also coincidentally use a six millimeter ball. 
at the elbow. Um, so you can do it that way round, or if indeed you needed to adopt another slightly different fashion, guys, you can use a joint, a six millimeter, this is a six millimeter ball joint, other size ball joints are available. Uh, obviously, the we've got a stud that would tap into there and then tap back into the forearm, just like so. If at all you didn't have a joint there and it was a ball in its place instead. So it's the opposite of the setup that we've already done, guys. If you're interested in an explanation of how that might work, then tap us up in the comments and we can certainly run through it. But I think for today, it pretty much covers it. If you've got any other questions, then certainly hit us up again in the comments below. Where are we? In the comments below. Uh, and I will do my best to get back at uh, get back to you as soon as I can. Well, thank you guys. It's been a pleasure as always. My name's Wes Wood for Animation Toolkit, and that as they say, is all folks. See you on the next one.